Hey, Chris here, and as some of you probably know, I've been doing a series of webinars with Myron Golden all about the fundamentals of creating wealth, creating value, and why it is so misunderstood, why there are so many myths surrounding it, and why the so-called common sense that we're, we're taught growing up is often catastrophically wrong. Well, anyway, one of, the, one of the concepts that we go over there is the value of money versus the value of time. And you will make a lot of mistakes if you think that time is money. You will make, you'll make two big mistakes if you think time is money. You will, uh, you will be willing to exchange a lot of your time in exchange for a little bit of somebody else's money. And you will spend a lot of time trying to save a little bit of money which are both big mistakes and I was going to expound on that a little further in this video and then I, I realized that I already had a blog post that I wrote six months ago or so that I talked about exactly that. I never put it into video form so I figure I will just read my blog post. So here it goes. Uh, it's called Know the Value of Your Time. Here's another productivity tip that I've been perfecting lately. I remember listening to a Jordan Peterson lecture in which he suggested students put a dollar value on their time in order to help them discriminate between those activities that are worth their time and those that aren't. After thinking about it for a little while, I've concluded that this is excellent advice and I've begun to implement it in my own life. I've got some ideas of how best to do this and I decided to share them with you, oh lucky viewer. First, you have to figure out how to set your price, which is by no means obvious. Having been an econ major in college, I nat naturally gravitated toward a marginal utility approach. Don't worry if you don't understand what that means. I'll illustrate with a thought, experience, a thought experiment. Say I offer to pay you $50 to do a task that takes you exactly one hour and you feel totally neutral about the task itself. That is, you don't find the task enjoyable or painful. It's just monotonous. Data entry, for example. Would you do it? How about if I offered $100 or $20? Ask yourself, what is the minimum dollar value you would be willing to accept for that hour-long task. This is the value that you should put on your time. Note that this will probably be different than whatever hourly rate you make at work. If you have a job, that's normal. If your job is already covering your needs, you will likely require a higher pay rate to be willing to do extra work. Okay, now you know how much money your free time is worth now. The next step is to analyze everything you do or are considering doing and decide whether or not each activity is worth your time. So let's say you're, you value your time at $50 per hour. Excluding unavoidable responsibilities, how have you spent your time the past few days? Let's say you spent two hours yesterday watching TV. You spent the first hour watching Impractical Jokers. Was that an experience enjoyable enough to be worth spending $50? Well, yeah, obviously. But then you spent the next hour watching whatever stupid true TV show comes on after Impractical Jokers. Was that worth $50? Probably not. Next time, turn the TV off after you watch what you really want to watch and do something that's worth your time. Better yet, figure out what's worth your time before you do it. Say your friend asks you if you want to go to a theme park. Ask yourself, is it worth spending four hours in line for 30 minutes of riding roller coasters? If you really, really like roller coasters, or you just enjoy hanging out with your friend even if you have to wait, then the answer may be yes. Otherwise, you should probably pass. Calculate the full price you're paying, for example, $50 for the theme park ticket, plus $50 times 4.5 hours for the value of your time equals $275. Is the full experience worth $275 to you? That's the question you have to answer for yourself. You can apply this to productive endeavors as well. Say your job will pay for your tuition to get a master's degree. You don't particularly want to go back to school, but you think it would help your career. Since colleges helpfully already measure their course offerings in weekly hours, you could easily come up with a time cost of the whole program. 80 credit hours times 12 weeks per semester times $50 per hour equals a time cost of $48,000. Do you expect the degree program to increase your future income by more than $48,000? If so, then it's a worthwhile investment. Another application of this that I've really started to take to heart recently is deciding whether to do something yourself or to pay someone else to do it. If it would take you an hour to do an oil change, with buying the oil, cleanup and all, and the mechanic shop charges $30, it would be a good investment to let the mechanic do it 
if you value your time more than $30 per hour. Likewise, if it would take you four hours to clean your house and a maid charges $80, the maid service would be a good investment if you value your time at more than $20 per hour. A lot of responsibilities and time drains can be outsourced now more than ever. I just tried Uber Eats meal delivery service for the first time recently. Last night I bought a burrito for $9 and Uber Eats charged $5 plus $2 tip to deliver it. At first I thought that was really steep. It almost doubled the price of my burrito. But then I considered that it probably saved me a good 45 minutes that I would have spent driving to the restaurant, waiting for food, then driving home. Using this new framework, I recognized that I spent $7 and saved 45 minutes. Not a bad deal. Of course, you don't need to come up with the exact calculations. That would take time in itself. For a big decision, such as enrolling in college, it might make sense. But for pretty much everything else, a rough estimate will do. To use the above example, I never bothered to calculate what exactly my 45 minutes was worth. I just knew that it was obviously worth a lot more than $7, which is all that really mattered. To benefit, the benefit to this exercise is that it keeps you accountable for how you spend your time. Your time is valuable and it deserves to be treated as such. Such a systematic approach to evaluating activities makes it much easier to say no to time vampires that may capture your attention but don't add much to your life. So that's it for the blog post and um, you know if you're interested in the webinar take a look at the link below. It's very very relevant to this topic because if you want to be successful, if you want to get rich then you have to devote your time to the things that are worthy of it. If you are you're spending hours and hours a day on things that you could outsource for for a fraction of what your time is worth, then uh, you are going to be much slower in your success than you would if you were just to pay somebody else to do it or find some way to avoid it or something like that. So that's it for today. Let me know if you have any comments or questions or anything else.